Welcome to Electra Online. When Venera 8 was launched, the second spacecraft to actually land on another planet, well, they had learned a few things. They had learned the pressure at the surface of Venus and the temperature surface of Venus, which was less than what they had designed Venera 7 for a couple of years earlier. So what they did instead is they took some of the weight away for protection against the heat, protection against the pressure. They reduced the strength of the materials of, that was used to protect the spacecraft, especially the lander that had that spherical shell around it to, to keep it from getting crushed by the atmosphere, and also the additional strength that was required on the lander itself as it reached the surface. And so because of that, they were able to use more of the weight available for instruments rather than for the protection. So what did, what did that mean? Well, the lander had some additional capability. It had a light sensor, a gas analyzer, a nanometer, and a gamma ray spectrometer. And of course, it was battery powered, so they could increase the battery power required to run the additional instruments. And the bus had an additional UV spectrometer that it didn't have before. The bus was still used for the cooling of the lander, and they were connected together as long as possible before the lander was sent on its own to, to go through the atmosphere. So initially, when they reach the atmosphere, they're moving at about 11 kilometers per second, which is very close to the escape velocity of Venus, which is about 10.7 kilometers per second. Because of the friction of the atmosphere, without using any parachutes or rocket engines or anything like that, the the atmospheric friction slowed them down to about 250 meters per second, which is still about 900 kilometers per hour or 560 miles per hour by the time they reached an elevation of 68 kilom or 67 kilometers above the surface. When they reached an altitude of 60 kilometers, the parachute opened in reefed mode, so reducing the area to reduce the forces on the parachute so that it wouldn't be ripped off. Remember, on Venera 7, something went wrong with the parachute and it crashed down to the surface at too high a speed. At an elevation of 50 kilometers, the instruments were turned on when the pressure was about one atmosphere, so about 50 kilometers in elevation in Venus, about 30 miles up, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure there, is the same as the atmospheric pressure on the Earth at sea level. Then when they reached 30 kilometers, the parachute was then fully opened. Again, they used the same system where the reefing material melted away. It opened up the parachute. And then they found that because they had a light sensor, there was actually a decrease in the illumination between 35 and 30 kilometers at that particular altitude. When they slowed down and reached an altitude of about 10 kilometers, they found that the wind speed had dropped to less than one kilometer per hour. That is part of the reason why it's so hot on Venus, because there's virtually no transfer of heat through the motion of the atmosphere near the surface of the planet. So that was very, very wind still, if you can think about it that way. So the transmission of the total time transmitted was about 63 minutes. Part of that was on the descent through the atmosphere, and about 50 minutes and a few seconds was from the surface itself. So it landed correctly. It was able to transmit for a period of 50 minutes from the surface. The light conditions were found to be about the same on Venus as it is on a cloudy day on the Earth. Visibility on Venus was estimated at about one kilometer. They also detected sulfuric acid. Of course, now we know that there's sulfuric acid clouds, there's sulfuric acid rain within the atmosphere. So they detected that sulfuric acid at that time. And also they attempted to study the regolite. The regolite is the loose material that you find on the surface. On the moon, of course, we remember all the footprints that the astronauts left. That's in the regolite. There was a fine dust of regolite, well, kind of a thick layer of regolite on the moon. And so they wanted to study that same regolite on Venus, which there was some regolite there, but not near as much as was found on the moon. So you can see that, this, that finally Venera 8 was a complete success in the landing. It landed upright, the parachute lasted, everything went to plan, and they were able to take far more measurements and far more data transmission with Venera 8 compared to Venera 7. As they're learning more and more, then the next mission, starting with Venera 9, became more adventurous, and then also they started sending cameras down so they could actually take pictures. And so the next video, we're going to take a look at some of the pictures that they took of the surface of Venus. It was quite amazing to see those. That was the story with the Venera spacecraft.